Greetings people of the world, Matthias Griffin back with you for the continuation of Let's Play Genshin Impact live here on Twitch. So before we go anywhere while I'm waiting for Luna to log in, um, I'm sure that those of you who are familiar are going to know that um, among the wishes available includes some new characters including New Villettes, who I have not yet seen in the Fontaine storyline. And I will say this much, I had gotten enough Primal Gems that I decided to play the 10 Wish game on this twice. And unfortunately, you can see Sheng Chao is there as well, and he showed up twice in my wishes. But, so did someone else. Incidentally enough, once I get the character selection screen available, incidentally enough, during the second run of wishes, right after Xing Zhou showed up again, so did Deluc. He's finally in my roster, which I'm sure will make Elizabeth very happy if she's able to make it to the stream tonight. Um, but I do have a gift for Elizabeth that I've been wanting to uh, make sure that it's okay for me to send to her. Um, I'm trying messaging her on Discord and haven't gotten anything back from her yet, but if she ever sees this, she'll be certainly happy to know that Deluc is finally in my roster as my 26th companion. And so, suffice it to say, I think she'll definitely be wanting me to make a concerted effort to grind up him. But first things first, we gotta worry about grinding the characters I have now. As you can see, with what I currently have, I, I'm currently marching Florian right to level 90. And once we get him to that point, of course, he will need the required ascension materials. So, yeah, it'll, it'll take a little while to get him up to that point. But once we do, you can be sure that he is definitely going to get some stuff to go down. Meanwhile, obviously, since it's been a long time since I've been playing Genshin Impact, I have not put as much effort into grinding for materials for my other characters. So, that being said, I do have some materials that are close to being obtained in full, um, including the Violet Grass, which I have gone um, to the Pharmacy in Liwa to get a few times, so I have gotten enough to where she's almost at the point where she can have enough of these to get her ascension. Then of course there is the there are ma the materials needed through fighting the Pyro Regis Vine, or this Emperor of Fire and Iron, which I have not yet seen. Oh, that's a frog. I was wondering what I always wondered what got Xinyan startled. And then of course there are the materials I need for Layla, which include. Um, having to go to the Aeon Drake over in Sumeru. I know where he is, but getting some help to get the opportunity to do more uh, material collecting would certainly be helpful. And um, trying to find the Pala Lotus, even though I know where it is, takes a long time. And then there's Noel, who I definitely need to work on going over to the Geo, um, monster. Um, the Geo Hypostasis, but now I see that there are other options, including Golden Wolf Lords, Ruin Serpents, and Experimental Field Generators, among other things. And I imagine these three latter are things that can be found within, um, the journey within Fontaine. Um, but as far as... Um, Valberries, obviously I would need to go find those on Stormbear Mountain. We're not lacking for any of the fourth materials um, needed to ascend these ladies. We have more than enough of those. It just comes down to being able to get what's necessary in order for the other materials. And so getting support from my um, viewers will certainly go a long way towards helping towards that. Um, Luna, if you are there right now, are you currently logging on? Um, while I'm getting your answer, um, I do want to try and get to 
the Court of Fontaine um, statue of the seven here, but I'm worried that in doing so I'm going to accidentally trigger the next cutscene. But while I'm waiting for Luna, I might as well just advance the story. Um, I guess we're going fourth floor. Take me up. Okay, I'm actually going away from the intended destination. Looks like maybe it'll be on the third floor. The Navia line. Uh, it doesn't look like I can, adva can advance further here, but... Oh no, the, it's just wait for the aqua bus. Yeah, where's the um, quest advancement? Also, how do we get to the Statue of the Seven? Oops, no. Nope. Is it floor one? No. Yeah, figuring out this elevator will take a while. <sighs> yeah, I, I don't blame you for feeling bored. In fact, the camera is already panning around. And in fact, the can't. The actually no, it's the elevator is moving around in such a way. So I'm, yeah, I'm back on the ground floor. How does one advance the plot? The court of Fontaine. Please watch your step. Oh, thank thank you very much, Rosley. Yeah, it's weird how the methodology works out here like this. So am I just taking the Aquabus then? After a while. Yep, okay. We're hopping on. I speak with Alfan, who runs this Aquabus. How do you do? Um, yeah, when does the... Immediately. Yeah, take me on a journey. I don't know where we're going, but take me on the journey. Welcome to the Navia Line. I am Elfan. The boat will be departing imminently. Please do not stick your head, hands, or other body parts outside the boat. The Aquabus operator is not responsible for any accidents or injuries resulting from doing so. Also, please remember to buy the Steambird, though I don't read it myself. <laughs> destination of the current tour is Erinias. Points of interest worth visiting include the Fountain of Lucene and the Opera Epiquest. If you look to the left in the direction we are currently traveling, you will see the famous Fontaine Research Institute up in the sky. Oh, those big blocks that are going to be fun turned hard. a new sightseeing opportunity. Human ingenuity truly is a wondrous thing. You got that right there, go girl. This is a goat, right? Well, actually, it's hard to tell with a squid tail. Now, what are you supposed to be, Alphane? <sighs> also, I've been on the um, other aqua bus that takes you in we are and now out approaching of the our final capital. destination. Please be sure to bring all your personal belongings with you as you disembark. Yeah, that, that Even tour guide is much I more toxic. Any forgotten items to the lost and found. The paperwork is rather annoying, as Melody hands are not suitable for grasping pens. Please be careful when disembarking. It has been my honor to be your tour guide this trip. Thank you. You're welcome. Where are we going, though? I was like, where are we docking this thing? <laughs> 
Go to the Fountain Plaza in front of the Opera House. Alright. Are we going there right now? Well, we, where we are going is towards some Rainbow Roses. Some on the other side looks like. Oh, hello there, waypoints. Guess I'll turn you on. Okay. Let me pick some fruit while we're at it. We have bowl fruit, or is it poulet? No need for climbing trees there, Floyan. Well, there's certainly no lack of horticulture around here. We've got a Marcotte. And another Rainbow Rose. Yeah, where are we supposed to be going? We're going south. There's only a lot of people on a path like this. <laughs> and we are within range of a... Culus. Is it it's resting at the top of the fountain? Oh, no, it's within the fountain. Alright. <laughs> yeah, lots of little fountains everywhere, lots of little canals. You're running out of stamina. Yeah. The, f the walls, the cliffs literally mean you cannot go over this. You're not kidding when they say that. Alright, now we got some fancy fountains. As we also approach another waypoint. So here's the main spot. An Eris Whirling Dance added to the archive. <laughs> so as we arrive on scene. Whoa! Now this is fancy! The Opera of Eclaise. What a place to hold a performance! No wonder Linny and Lynette were looking forward to it. There's a lot of people standing around the fountain up ahead. Oh, Archon, please bless us with a bright and healthy child. We pray. I don't know why you always feel the need to ask so much. I'll be happy as long as our child is healthy and lives a peaceful life. Well, isn't that exactly what he was wishing for? <laughs> I guess if there are, kid, then there's no doubt they'll turn out smart. Maybe this is one of the customs in Fun King. There sure are a lot of couples here. Yeah, too bad Florian doesn't have a, a special person of his own. Aside Vashay. from his sister, of course. Wait a minute. Yeah. Oh, Who goes there? Vashay. Vashay. Who's speaking to me in French? Yeah, did you just say something? No, nope. Ima didn't say anything. Are you hearing things? Uh, we must be. This must be tied to our next storyline. Welcome to the Fountain of Lucene. All the water flowing through Fontaine converges here. It's customary for newlyweds to come here and wish for children. <laughs> oh, Lynette! You scared Paimon! When did you get here? Mm, when he asked me to wait here for you, remember? Yeah, by the way, Lynette. What do you mean? There are a lot of people here right now. It seems as if the voice is coming from the fountain. <gasps> hey! You're not trying to scare Paimon, are you? Besides, it's the middle of the day! It's not the time for eerie things! Don't blame it on me. Hmm, I see. I might be able to tell you something that could help explain the voice you heard. Oh, please enlighten me. In fact, you might not be imagining things at all. 
I suspect that what you heard is a result of your hypersensitivity to the hydro element. Others in my family have had similar experiences. It's because of his sensitivity to the hydro element? But what would hearing a voice have to do with elemental power? When do you cry, Paimon? When do you cry? Wait, what? What does that have to do with anything? And when has Paimon ever cried? Just answer me. When do you cry? When you're sad? Uh, when Paimon's really sad? Oh, and when Paimon's super happy. Oh, and also when Paimon's really, really scared. <laughs> In other words, then a lot. you should understand that tears contain your most intense emotions. Like I just mentioned, the Fountain of Lucene is where all the flowing water in Fontaine converges. Even the tears that fall to the ground will eventually gather here. So maybe what you heard was the intense emotion coming from someone's tears. I'm not sure whether I buy it though, but I do no notice the coins in the fountain. Is this like the Trevi Fountain in Rome that just was vandalized earlier this year? So, what did the voice say? It's calling out someone's name. If you were hearing their emotions, then Paimon wonders what happened to them. Rather than worrying about them, we should worry about my brother first. Don't I let guess. that calm look of his fool you. He tends to get pretty nervous just before a performance. So chatting with Linny might help him relax a little before he goes on stage. Oh, right. That makes sense. Let's go in and see Linny. How am I doing? Um, well, um... There's been, there continues to be a lot of flux going on at where I work. More people were laid off today, including someone who I had been carpooling with for the last two months. So suffice it to say, it was very disappointing. Because I was really hoping to be able to do that long term because... Aside from that, I have to travel an hour to and from work every day by bus. And those things are becoming less and less reliably on time. So as we go inside the Opera House... Ah, Traveler and Paimon. Good to see you. I knew you two would come. Are you kidding? We want to miss it for the world! We've been looking forward to it! <laughs> I can tell, judging by how early you've arrived. But you're actually right on time. The audience still hasn't started entering the venue yet, which means now is the perfect chance for us to take you to the best seats in the house. Wait just a moment, I'll fetch the tickets. Also, um, and, but what about you, Luna? Have you gotten the, um, Raiden Shogun scroll from me yet? Has that arrived to you yet? So, as we're talking it up with Lynette, our little Mikote. The Opera House has assigned seating, so you always have to make reservations. I've already reserved your seats, and here are your tickets. Ooh, front row seats! Thanks, Linny! Don't mention it. There's no need to keep thanking me. Oh, hey, just Linny! Make sense. Could you come over here and take a look at this? Cowl? As in Simon Cowl? Oh, I'll be right there. Seems there's an issue with the stage props over there. That's Cowl, my assistant, calling me. I'll go lend him a hand. And I don't buy Simon Cowl as an assistant to anyone. Yeah, we'll just go to our seats. You go ahead, Lenny. And so some time later. Okay, excellent. Yeah, glad you have it now. Now I just need to send... Elizabeth heard the Luke scroll. But yeah, do you know what's happened to her on Discord? Because I have no idea if she's still on our server or not. Yeah, but you don't sit down, do you, Paimon? Oh, there's Nuvilet. Uh... 
What? Uh, <laughs> Nothing's happened. We can go over to him if we want. Hey, traveler. Maybe we should strike up a conversation with the person next to us. Since we're sitting together and the rest of the place is practically empty still. It's kind of awkward if we don't say anything. <laughs> Isn't that usually your job? <laughs> Excuse me, I did not realize you felt awkward. I am terribly sorry. Uh, what are you doing back here, Hawk Moth? I would be perfectly happy to chat with you if that is what you would like. Oh, uh, so you heard all of that, did ya? <laughs> Boy, you sure have good ears. Paimon thought she was keeping her voice down. You never do, Paimon. And also, yes, I know, Monarch did win in Miraculous Ladybug. He did finally get his wish, which I kind of expected he always would. Uh, wait, that's not it, Paimon's... Sorry, um, Paimon's the one who was being rude, talking under her breath like that. Uh, so, let's talk, but, uh, what should we talk about? How about formal introductions? Uh, oh, Paimon's got it. You're also here early and sitting in the front. Are you a friend of Linny's too? A friend, you say? Well, if Mr. Linny would like to be my friend, I would be more than happy to reciprocate. Oh, that's not Hawk Moth this time. Okay. Oh, so you're not friends with Linny then. Oh, this is getting more awkward by the second. <laughs> ah, uh, Paimon nearly forgot to make her introduction. Nice to meet you. Paimon is Paimon, and this is the Traveler. We just arrived in Vaudane. It is an honor to meet you two. I have heard of your deeds across Tavat. And as required by proper etiquette, I will also introduce myself. I am... Oh, Monsieur Nervillet. What an honor it is to have you here to see my show. Ah, Mr. Linney. I should say it is in fact an honor for me to see your performance in person. Oh, wait. Nervillet? Could he be... Hmm? Important. I saw you all chatting just now, but it seems you still don't know who Monsieur Nervillet is. Well, we only have just met. Allow me to introduce you to Fontaine's Chief Justice. That seat is always reserved for him. It wouldn't be too much to say that he's the symbol of justice and honesty here in Fontaine. And what the heck is that little text at the top? Um, Chief... Like, you guys see it too, right? The little text between Chief and Justice? Like, is it supposed to say Judex or Udex? Or what the heck is that supposed to say? Like, do you guys know? I'm, I'm asking because you obviously would be more familiar with this than I am. But what the, he what the heck the little font there did they insert? Ooh! Uh, sorry for being so rude just now. Paimon had no idea. You are such an important person. Well, given the fancy outfit he's wearing. No offense taken. Being Chief Justice is merely what I do for work. Nearly every person has their usual reserved seat, so I'm not so special, really. And by the way, I should probably let you know, even though I would prefer not to. <laughs> there's someone sitting up there in the VIP seats that has been striking a pose for quite a while now. Oh, the Archon. I believe she is trying to give you a most elegant and impressive first impression. So I think you should take notice of her sooner rather than later. Otherwise, she may become flustered. Hello. <laughs> huh? Oh, it's Farina, the Hydro Archon. Huh. She sure has a smug and satisfied look on her face. Because she has no idea that you saw right through her act. Um, well, that's pretty blunt, isn't it, Paimon? Very good. That is for the best. No need to pay her any more attention. We may now enjoy the show. Huh? If and when it happens. So is this what things are like between the Chief Justice and the Hydro Archon? All right. Please wait just a moment longer. I've pretty much finished my preparations, and the performance will start as soon as the audience has made their way to their seats. Yeah, where are they? Yay! The show is finally about to start! Ooh, Paimon can hardly wait! Paimon's never seen a real live magic show before! Even though Paimon literally is magic. The crowds enter the venue and the curtains open for the show to begin. Woo! 
the lights go out. the lights. The show must be starting. Paimon, quiet. Hmm. Oh, sorry. Paimon will try to stay quiet. <laughs> Please. Welcome, one and all, to the Opera Epicles. I am the star of today's show, Linny. Hello there. And you got some applause. And over here is my sister, Lynette, who will be working as my wonderful assistant. Please, let's give her a warm welcome. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I know she may seem to be a little sleepy right now, but that's just a sign that she's nervous. Whatever. <laughs> now, some of you may be thinking, two vision holders who can freely manipulate elemental powers performing magic is not true magic at all. So, I would like to take a moment to assure you that elemental powers will have nothing to do with what you will witness on the stage today. Alright. And your mask man can verify this? Both Lynette and myself have removed our visions for the show. That way, even the gods won't be able to help us. Oh, good point. That's what makes the show real magic. Now, without further ado, let the show begin. Lynette will now exit the stage to make some preparations. I know you might miss her, but don't worry. She'll be coming right back on stage momentarily. Perhaps in an unexpected way. I'm sure she'll be stealing the spotlight soon enough. Oh, and before I forget, there's one more thing I should say. You never know what can happen in the blink of an eye. And thus, oh, the lights go completely out. A magician's out. greatest skill is making things disappear or appear. The possibilities are endless. Well, have at it. <sighs> Nothing in here. Hmm. Until. <laughs> uh huh? <laughs> Looks like you got a few cards that are hiding out. Hmm? Hmm. And a dove. <laughs> But this isn't what you came for. These little tricks, you've seen them all before. So it's time for something truly extraordinary. Which Don't is? you think? This one's a little tricky. And another dove, he generates by rubbing his hands together. Using this That's... water tank, I shall make my sister vanish completely. Right before your very eyes. Uh, you said water tank? That means she's gonna try and do her best Harry Houdini impression. She can breathe underwater, right? It's actually quite simple. She'll just turn into air bubbles and float right out of the top. If she doesn't drown. Oh no! I told them to check all the props carefully. With the lid on, even air can't escape. An amateur magician would be getting very nervous right around now. But you're no amateur. <laughs> Luckily, it's me on stage. So let me show you what a true virtuoso can do. And... Whoa. Uh -huh. She's no longer in her clothes. Lynette, are you still there? Don't go too far. We don't want to use up all our magic. Hi, I'm back. Uh -huh. And all in her clothes. <laughs> well done. <laughs> yeah, what's see to that, Archon? That's why I had no idea she was wearing the Cheshire Cat on her shoulder. Yeah, I know Lenny had one on his hat, but I had no idea that Lynette had one on her shoulder. And so after that impressive display... Oh, what the world is happening? How did he do that? Paimon didn't seem to do anything! Was it Lynette inside the water tank? How did she disappear and then reappear out of nowhere? <laughs> if we could see easily through his tricks, 
and that would mean that his skills are still lacking. To appreciate magic, you should focus on the show happening on stage, rather than getting caught up in trying to see that which has been intentionally hidden. Huh, guess you're right. Hyman couldn't believe her eyes when Lynette reappeared. Amazing! Thank you, thank you everyone. I'm glad you enjoyed that performance. But our magical journey has only just begun. I've prepared even more astonishing surprises for everyone here. Such as? The magic of transformation and disappearance can go far beyond what you've just seen. Yeah, including whatever you had in the hat there. I'm sure many of you are thinking that escaping the water tank was impressive enough. But Lynette is still my assistant after all. In which case, I have ample time to make all necessary preparations. So, for my next trick, I will require the participation of one lucky audience member. It's me, isn't it? Please, if my assistants could bring out the magical boxes now... There are two boxes, and only two boxes. One is here, and one is there in the aisle among the audience. I'm sure many of our clever audience members have already guessed our next magic trick. <laughs> a swap! Our lucky audience member and I will each enter a magic box. After one minute, we will each emerge from the opposite box. Now please, everyone pay very close attention to the box you see here. Don't give me any chance to make a move. Wow! How's he gonna do this? Hey, do you think this is all magic tricks? Or does Lenny have actual superpowers? <laughs> Let's watch and see. The lucky audience member will be generated by this random number selector. Oh, it really? selects numbers entirely at random. Even I don't know who will be chosen to participate. Now then, let's begin. Oh, let me see. Oh, row seven, seat three. Congratulations! You now have the chance to experience magic firsthand for an entire minute. Please, come forward. My assistant will take you beside the magic box. And I'm so sorry, it might goes. be a little cramped inside, but no need to feel nervous. We've carefully arranged everything for you to be as comfortable as possible. That explained the balloons? You don't need to do anything, but no matter what strange things may happen, don't come out of the box. If the magic is interrupted, who knows where you might end up. You might even find yourself in the Fortress of Meripede. Oh, how encouraging. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Before I enter the magic box, there is one more thing I need to ask the audience to do. Could you all give me a countdown? From how much? Like this. 60, 59, 58. Just keep counting down. You can go a little faster or slower if you like. I won't be able to see anything in the pitch black box, so I'll be relying on your voices to know when time is up. Oh, and no tricks now. If you quickly count from 60 in just 30 seconds, then I'll be in a tough spot. Ooh! Paimon kinda wants to count faster after hearing him say that! <laughs> <laughs> Watching the whole crowd can together, you couldn't even if you wanted to. No, no, that won't do. I can see it in your eyes. You still can't be trusted. Let's practice together. You still can't be trusted! Come on, repeat after me. Oh, man. 60, 59, 58. <laughs> 60, 59, 58! That's right, perfect. Keep it going. All right, I'll see you all on the other side once you've finished counting. 54, 53, 52? Why aren't you counting, Nervalet? I am counting in my head. I think things are exciting enough in here as it is. Merely a consequence of my identity and personality. Do not worry about me. Just enjoy the show. You look so serious that Paimon thought you might be feeling uncomfortable or something. 40! 39! Meanwhile... 38. Mr. Linny, are you all right in there? Is everything ready? Yes, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm just double-checking the direction of the magic. Also, hey, Baba, welcome to seeing Glad's Happy with us. The wrong places. For example, mid-air right above the audience. Even though he's saying that, Linny doesn't seem nervous at all. Yeah, it's all part of the show. Whoa. Ah, what was that noise? Did you hear it too? 
They come from the stage? Not sure. Anyway, it doesn't seem like anyone's worried about it. Yeah, because they're focused on counting. 24! 20 Lenny! What's wrong, Mr. Lenny? I can still hear you moving in there. I seem to have accidentally knocked over a decoration. I'm trying to fix it, but it's pitch black in here. I can't tell left from right. Uh-oh. Never mind the decorations. There's no time for that. The show is what's important. No, that's unacceptable. I want my show to be perfect. Don't worry, we still have 20 seconds. Hear them counting? 19, 18, 17! Uh, it seems things aren't quite going as planned. I apologize, everyone. Uh -oh. It feels like you're all starting to count faster, but that's all right. I know it can be tiring to do such a long countdown. Ten seconds and change is still plenty of time. And so, Ten. as it comes back to over here... Almost there now. Whew. Swapping two people is harder work than you might think. Even a master magician like me can't guarantee I'll get it right the first time. <laughs> hey, wait. Is this the back one? I can't tell. They both look the same inside. Huh? No, that's not it. I'll try again. Seven! Hey, slow down! Six. Honestly! Five! Oh, and even Florian's getting involved. Three! Uh, whoops! Two. That doesn't count! Zero! <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> of the audience even at the last second. <laughs> Meanwhile up front, with a few pyro shots, fireworks and confetti. Oh, she's in there. She's not in there. At least, not alive. Oh my. Why was the water tank hanging above the box? Yeah, that would get you three red X, four red X's now in America's Got Talent. Is this part of the show? Clearly not. Mr. Lenny, you're going to use magic to fix the stage now, right? What happened? Oh no. Maybe this isn't part of the show. The girl was still in that box, right? Yeah. This performance is over. Medical staff with me. Guards, secure the scene and detain all the performers. Seal the exits. No one is allowed in or out at this time. <laughs> yes, that's right. If this was just an accident, then we must investigate the cause. But if this was all part of some scheme, then... Then those accountable will not escape the judgment of the God of Justice! No need to be alarmed, you two. We'll get to the bottom of this soon enough. I hope you're right. After some time, the guards complete their investigation. Unfortunately, the person who is in the magic box has been pronounced dead. His name was Cowell, one of the assistants in Linny's magic troupe. Wait, what? You killed Simon Cowell? Apparently, the fireworks on stage ignited the ropes that were suspending the water tank, which then caused the tank to fall onto the stage. As of now, we are still not sure why we found Cowell in the box, rather than the guest from the audience. And after an initial search of the area, the guards have confirmed that the girl is nowhere to be found. It appears that this incident was not merely some mishap with the performance. Sabotage. And there are many indications that it is connected with the case of the serial disappearances of young women. What? Well, the... the serial disappearances case? Oh, jeez. <gasps> That's the case that Charlotte mentioned before! And in front of an audience including the Archon and Chief Justice, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know the truth. I can see through the whole thing. Really, using such a shallow and obvious mystery as his finale. Did he really underestimate us that badly? Uh, remember, Baba, um, Nuvalet said that no one was allowed to leave. I say that our powerful magician, Mr. Linny, 
is now the prime suspect for the serial disappearances case. Bum bum bum. Huh? Why me? This whole thing was an accident. No. Oh, this all occurred during your magic show, did it not? The missing girl disappeared after being chosen, did she not? The deceased is one of your assistants, is he not? Now that I think about it, that whole speech about magicians making things disappear was nothing more than a provocation, a bald-faced challenge. That can't be right! How can Lenny do this? He was in the box on the stage the entire time! We can even hear his voice! Besides, before the show, he told us that he would like to catch the criminal behind the disappearances! He couldn't possibly mean catching himself! Yeah, it's hard to believe this all happened during the show. Save discussion for a later time, please. Lady Farina, may I assume that your comments just now constitute an accusation against Mr. Linney and his associates, and that you are pressing charges? Huh? I just think that he... Well, I, uh, think it might be a little early to talk about formally pressing charges. Seems like this Archon isn't very sure of herself for the best of times. But what Lady Farina said just now makes perfect sense. Looks like she's gonna personally deliver justice. A kidnapping and murder carried out under the cover of a magic show. Lady Farina said it all. <laughs> uh, I mean... Of course, my dear people! But what excites me even more than the obvious truth before our eyes is the opponent I'll be facing. That's right. I mean you, Traveler! Oh, You'll support really? support Linny, won't you? After all, he was the one who helped you the first time we met. So I have to fight you now? <laughs> There's no problem at all. You know, the Traveler and I already had a duel the first time we met. But with Linny's help, our little duel ended in a draw. It never even <laughs> happened. But draws really are the most boring possible outcome. So, no more draws. Between the two of us, there must be a clear winner and loser. And what better place to hold such a riveting showdown and decide the true victor than here, on the grandest of stages, the Opera Epicles! Huh? It wasn't a draw. She obviously lost last time. I understand. Charges have now been pressed, and as such, a trial is in order. Well, Traveler, seems Lady Farina has set you in her sights. But putting her dramatic rhetoric aside for a moment, I would like to ask you... Can I back out? Are you willing to act as Mr. Linney's attorney and defend him in this case? I get the feeling everything will be manipulated, but I'm Very stuck. well. The trial will be held a day from now in the Opera House. Both sides may investigate the scene to build their cases and search for the truth. Linney and his troop are all potential suspects and shall remain within the Opera House. The audience may begin to leave in an orderly fashion once they have been cleared by the guards. A day isn't that long. Let's see what kind of case this big shot outlander can build in such a short amount of time. <laughs> I'm really quite looking forward to hearing it. Everyone is dismissed and the audience begins to leave along with Farina and Nubilets. Ugh. Yeah. Why am I implicated now? Sorry about everything that happened just now. Were you frightened? Of course! Who wouldn't be scared after witnessing an accident like that? Yeah, I'm a little shaken up myself. How could this happen? And poor Cal. I know you already claimed that you would defend me, but now it's just us talking. Tell me, do you think I could possibly be the murderer? He's shaking his head no, so... Good to hear. Thank you so much for trusting me. I'm sure everyone sees me as the biggest suspect at this point. But, if you ask me, the whole thing is mysteries layered upon mysteries, such that all that's left... is confusion. I don't know whether what happened there on the stage was purely an accident or not, and I don't know why poor Cal was in the box. 
As for how that girl chosen from the audience could suddenly disappear, I'm afraid I don't have any answers either. If someone tampered with my performance, then we need to figure out what they did. Even a skilled and knowledgeable magician like myself couldn't pull all that off in just one minute. Yes, that's very strange. Which is precisely why we need to investigate! As this book says, <clears throat> The impossible could not have happened. Whatever happened must have been that which is possible. <laughs> yeah, where did you get those glasses and the mustache? Paima bought them when we were reading at the bookshop in the city earlier. Pretty cool, huh? Um, what do you think, audience? Don't worry, Paimon used her own savings to buy them. It wasn't from our travel funds. You have savings? <laughs> I, think I thought you would have burned them all on food. You have good taste, Lynette. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right attitude. Feeling depressed isn't going to help me now. I need to get back to my normal self. But with the guards watching our every move, it's going to be especially difficult for Lynette and I to prove our own innocence. Well, I guess that's why we're involved. Good thing you agreed to be our attorneys. <sighs> Thanks for that. We'll be counting on you. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, just leave it to us. Oh, uh, since we're going to start investigating, Paimon has a question first. Where did Lynette go during the performance? Oh, well... I'm afraid that would involve some of our essential trade secrets as magicians. Well, given the circumstances? The secrets behind our magic are past saving, Lenny. Yeah. I suppose you're right. The truth behind our tricks is going to be important evidence that will be weighted during the trial. <sighs> Tis truly a pity. As a magician, our magic show is a work of art. We've poured countless hours and spared no effort in perfecting it. But if revealing our secrets will help you uncover the truth behind what happened, then it will be well worth it. We should go somewhere else if we're going to discuss our magic tricks. We'll go speak with the guards, and in the meantime, you can go investigate the stage and the seating areas. Alright, let's go have a look while the investigation teams are still here. Detective Paimon is on the case! Alright then. So. Officer, how's the investigation going? Uh, we're the, yeah, we're the attorneys. Ah, uh, I see. You must be the traveler that Lady Farina mentioned. Listen, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I'd avoid getting mixed up in this whirlpool of a mess if I were you. Well, we appreciate that, but we've kind of been dragged into this. By the Archon herself. What do you mean? Come with me and you'll see. The deceased is one of Linny's assistants named Cal. Even though he hadn't joined the troop long, he was hardworking and everyone generally liked him. The assistants are usually in charge of setting up and inspecting the props, as well as assisting with the show and keeping the crowd engaged. As you probably saw when you were in the audience, the water tank suddenly fell and smashed the box with cowl inside it. Yeah. Wasn't the girl supposed to be in there? This is the real mystery. We've already searched the scene and were unable to find any traces of the girl. However, if you look carefully, the box was positioned directly under the water tank. The ropes holding the tank were then burned by the pyrotechnics on stage, causing them to snap. All these factors lining up so perfectly makes it hard to see this as a mere accident. If anything, the more logical explanation is that the whole incident was intentionally planned, and Linny is the most likely person to have access to all these areas. But he doesn't have a motive! Are you both good friends of his? We're hardly acquaintances. You can't say we're good friends, but we've known each other for a little while. So in just a short time, he was not only able to win your trust, but even convince you to act as his attorneys. It's the Archon who did that. I know there's no such thing as magic. The real trick of a magician is holding the audience in the palm of their hand. I've seen a lot of cases, and I can tell you that people are the least reliable kind of evidence. Not always true. Sorry, I tend to be pretty straightforward. Just know that I'm warning you for your own good. Fair enough. Anyway, you may investigate the scene of the crime yourselves if you're curious. Who knows, maybe you'll be able to come up with some new evidence. Yeah, maybe. You can use the case record to confirm your current evidence and clue collection and situation and sort case-related information. 
You can check as yet undiscovered evidence and clues in the case record, then investigating the corresponding area to locate them. Use the perception skill to find evidence and clues that can be investigated within a certain radius around yourself. This will advance your overall progress. Guards investigation report. The investigation from the guards indicates that the fireworks launched at the tail end of the magic performance set the rope dangling the water tank alight, causing the tank to fall and kill Cowl, who was within it. It seems evident that Lenny is the likeliest user of the prop to commit a crime. However, the reason for the victim being Cowl and the reason for the lo chosen lady's disappearance remain mysteries. The deceased's identity. The deceased is one of Lenny's assistants named Simon Cowell. He was well trusted by all his colleagues. His job was setting up and inspecting the props as well as assisting with the show and keeping the crowd engaged. Use perception skill. Examine white lawns. This is where the magic box was struck. If Cal weren't inside the box at that moment, he might have dodged the falling water tank. Alright, R2. Who's inside the opera house? As in... Like, testimonials? The investigation team has some new findings. Turns out there's an issue with the random number selector after all. See, I told you. What if the machine picked some big guy's seat? Do you think the murderer would have still made his move then? Thanks. Sorry to interrupt, but we're helping Lenny and Lynette with their side of the investigation. What were you saying about the number selector? There's something wrong with it? You're trying to help them? <laughs> That'll be a tall order. Lenny used the machine to pick a random member of the audience during his performance, right? The lucky girl that later disappeared. Well, we thought there might be a serious problem with the machine, so we had it taken away for further inspection. It turns out that the seat number it picked wasn't random at all. The machine picks that same number every time. Oh, really? I'm sure you already know that you have to make a reservation in advance to get a seat, regardless of whether it's a trial or some performance. In other words, Linny knew who would be sitting where from the very beginning. Hmm. That much checks out. Linny reserved our seats for us, too. Bet you see why I was saying it'd be tough to make a case for Linny. Sort of bother you. Hmm. Even though it's bad for Linny's case, Paimon had better write it down. Yeah. Random number selector. This device was used during Len Linny's magic performance to choose the lucky num member of the audience. How the guards have found that it will generate the exact same number no matter what. Clearly someone has tampered with it. But we can't prove that yet. Okay, then... Check out the boards. Same and damaged magic box. The broken magic box was left on the scene after the guards completed their investigation. Looking at it now, the water tank must have struck it really hard. Of course, Desmond is still here. Oh, we have Maurice. Hello there! What are you investigating? Hmm? Oh, this location has also been cordoned off because the Magic Troop members are currently considered prime suspects. The investigation team is still collecting evidence. The seats were all booked in advance, so we were able to deduce the missing woman's identity by checking the guest list. Yeah, could you tell us who she is? Sure. It's not like this is confidential information. We will publish it later anyway when we petition the public to help us find the missing person. Her name is Halsey. She's a painter from Fontaine who's made a bit of a name for herself. Oh, seems like the perfect kind of person to sweep away. Apparently, she wasn't a regular at the Opera House, but she'd been feeling some pressure with her work lately, which made her decide to come see the magic show. The Magic Troop members all claim not to know her, and we have looked into her social connections. It seems that she has no personal grievances or conflicts of interest with the suspects. Well, that's important. Simply put, she wasn't related to the Magic Troop at all, which matches the features of the previous serial disappearances. Hmm. Were the victims of previous cases also chosen at random? That's how it seems to us, in any case. Apart from the fact that they were all young women of around the same age range, 
There really weren't any other connections between them. <sighs> okay then. Yeah, okay then. I don't need to be so formal. If you do happen to see the missing girl, please be sure to contact us. Yeah, of course. It is of utmost importance that we get to the bottom of these disappearances. Information about the missing lady's identity. Halsey is the missing person. She is the famous painter and came to watch the magic show in order to take a break from her own creative work. She isn't known to have been entangled in quarrels with any of the members of Lenny's magic troop. <clears throat> over here. So this is the rope that broke and caused the water tank to fall. Hmm. The rope looks pretty durable. How can it be burned through so quickly by fireworks? So either we, Lenny didn't realize this was a safety concern, or... Hmm? Why are you suddenly so serious, Traveler? We have a look. Looking at where the rope snapped. Whoa! Look! This bit is made from different material! Okay, okay, so that's what that's for, All right? Most of it was burned away, but there's still a little bit of it left! Yeah, it seems to be flammable. Huh. So if a rope meant to hold something was made with that kind of material in it, then that means... Wait, why don't you write all this down? Let's take notes! Yeah, you should. Special rope. This rope was used to suspend the water tank. It suddenly broke when the fireworks were being launched on stage. The investigation has shown that the location where the rope snapped was made of flammable material. Oh, that's just the first one. So we got that spot, we got that spot. Yeah, it's pointing me out into the, into the audience. So I'm obviously going to um, the um, crowd is also going to be important. Do I need to speak to any of these two? No. Yeah, we'll just drop off the stage. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, the box, but there's also something over here. Um, Elsador? Or Esnador? I see that you're investigating the area. Well, it just so happens that I'm interested, too. If you find any new and interesting leads, be sure to share them with me, all right? We don't have too many thoughts yet. <laughs> then why don't I tell you my hypothesis first? The way I see it. And I'll start it with that loud thud. The thud? Oh, you mean the sound that happened during the countdown? Yes, exactly. It wasn't terribly loud. But I suspect that most people heard it. It's just that everyone was awaiting the results of Linny's trick with bated breath. So no one paid it much mind. But now that the incident has happened, the thud has become an important clue. Hmm. That makes sense. So what do you make of it? I'm of the opinion that it may have been the sound of Linny's accomplice. Lynette, perhaps. Jumping atop the water tank or something like that. And when the pyrotechnics went off, she cut the rope, sending the water tank crashing down. Cut but it. Wasn't the noise we heard too loud for that? Perhaps the balance wasn't right, leading to a particularly rough landing. Yeah, wouldn't the water tank have to start its swing a bit in that case? Oh, that's true. Hmm. I suppose I must reconsider. Yeah, you must. Hmm. That does remind Paimon, though. What was with that sound? Strange sound during the magic show. During the switching performance, there was an audible thump that many audience members heard. Alright, now we'll go over to the box itself. Once I'm allowed to look at it, thanks. It looks like an ordinary box, but Lenny somehow moved instantly from the stage to being inside of it. How did he do it? And 
none of the... Yeah, you're not allowed to talk to me either. You two... And you two have nothing to say. Oh, the, la the last clue's way out. Last clue's way outside. Yeah, I just need to be absolutely certain that I'm covering all my bases. Is there anything up in the balcony that's some no? that I'm going to miss one thing that's gonna make me screw this up. We do have another guard to talk to. Who when just happens to be? still talking to the guards, it seems he'll have a lot of explaining to do. I think someone will be assigned to monitor us later, but that's all right. All right. can't talk to me. As long as they have check marks over their heads, at least we know we're getting somewhere. It feels like we're getting further and further away is what's actually happening. So much so... Hey, you! Yes, both of you! Over here! Oh, I've been geez. keeping an eye on you for a while now. Oh, did we dealing with the Mafia now? What's with the guys in the suits with the crossed arms, the hats? The guy on the right looks like he's from the Blues Brothers. What's going on? Huh? You mean us? That's right. If I'm not mistaken, you're also among those who wish to cut down the thorns and pursue the truth. No? And by the looks of it, you're not from Fontaine. Yeah, we're not wearing blue. Well, you're right on the more about that one, but... Who are you? Yeah. Tell us. <laughs> Femme Fatale. Have you never heard of the Spina di Rosula? Nope. From mediating disputes and providing protection to solving conundrums, you name it, Spina di Rosula does it. And I, Navia, have the honor of being its renowned president. Should I be worried? Though those who play by our rules call me boss. Yeah, because you're a mafia boss. I'm Silver, her attendant. Pleased to meet you. Yeah, you're not the least bit scary at all. And I'm Melus. Demoiselle's various daily needs and affairs are under my purview. Huh? Boss? Demoiselle? What gives with the names? <clears throat> well, I am the second generation president. Melus and the others are still used to my previous title. My apologies, demoiselle. Should you prefer, boss, I will endeavor to use that instead. <laughs> no, no need. You don't have to call me boss. Just Navia is fine. Fine. Okay, if you say so. Not that we're members of Spina di Rasula anyway. Yes. <laughs> All merely trifling details. Never mind. Now, back to the situation at hand. That's right. I've always kept an eye on the serial disappearance cases. My interest stems from a matter back from my father's time. Judging from the look of things, I find Linny an unlikely mastermind. Agreed. Really? We think so too! That's why we're looking for clues now! But how did you come to that conclusion? Intuition, naturally. My unparalleled intuition. Just how unparalleled is it? Farina sure was quick to point the finger at Linny without any decisive evidence whatsoever, wasn't she? Yeah, she's... she seems like the kind of person who makes the judgment right out of the gate. But that's not uncommon for her. If you remember, the Justice had to interrupt her and ask if she was pressing charges just to keep her from getting carried away. Anyway, a trial begins the moment someone levels charges. And, of course, there was no way Farina was going to back down in that situation. Sounds more like you just don't trust the Hydro Archon. Yeah, I get that feeling myself. Well, what's your opinion? 
I must admit that she can be interesting at times. But liking her doesn't mean that I'll blindly agree with her. Yeah, uh, as um, in, unlike the various numerous subjects she has. All right, I've answered your question. Now it's time you answer mine. Sure. Wait a minute, did that answer count? Well, I say it does. But don't worry, you won't hear any pointless questions from me. In your opinion, do you think it's right to treat a trial like it's an opera? Um, well? Well, it's all uncharted territory to me. And why would that be? Doing so makes it easy for the truth to fall by the wayside, or something serious like a trial shouldn't be treated like entertainment. You hear me, CNN? <laughs> See, Silver and Malouse? I told you they'd be different. Most astute of you, demoiselle. I too think that the traveler's response was most excellent. No matter how wonderful the script or how fervent the audience's expectations may be, the trials that go on stage here must be based in fact. Then if that can be done, boss, then... All right, that's quite enough, Malouse. Anyway, I like your answer. You pass with flying colors. Now, I need to make some preparations, following which our joint investigation shall commence. You two shall be my assistants. Okay. Wait! Since when do we become assistants? Yeah, we're the, we're the attorneys, not assistants. Mm hmm Oh, uh, well, I can be the assistant. Sure. Or your companion, if you like. I'm really not that fussy. Hmm. That's more like it. <laughs> so, I think you're missing the point, Paimon. Seems you've already agreed, then. Far be it from me to brag, but I believe that Demoiselle's intuition will be instrumental in uncovering the truth. You wish to save a friend from false accusations, and we wish to unravel the disappearances. In this sense, our goals are aligned. Hmm, you have a point. Huh. You're quite the talker, aren't you, mister? And what about you over there? What do you think? You seem like you've got something on your mind. Yeah. I have nothing to add. Really? Oh, alrighty then. Something tells me he's keeping something bottled in until it really matters. We'll be making some preparations first. Uh, just be sure to let us know if they start revealing Linny's tricks. <laughs> Thanks! Well, you got it there, Miss Navia. Alright, in the meantime... Tristan, member of the guards, but before we get to you, I want to check out the balcony. I'm gonna leave no stone unturned right now. I was about to say, is that the random number generator? So here's how things look from the balcony perspective. Anything of note over here? Oh! Crap! Clever the mur- Quiet, Paimon, I fell off. I fell off because I couldn't find where the stairs were. Yeah, don't worry, Tristan, I'll get to you. Meanwhile, play some dual monsters with Yugi and Joey. <laughs> Just like, dude, where is everything? I'm expecting there to be more clues. What I was also expecting as well was to see um, a clue spot at the point where the ran um, seat was for the lady. That's something also I was looking for. So I switch over from one side to the other. I'm really shocked that no more stuff is coming up. You'd think the balcony would be a perfect place to hide some evidence. And 
yet for some reason that's not what's happening. So, that's so surprising that there's no um, clue icon in the general area of where the lady was sitting. I mean, for someone as famous as Halsey, you would think that she would be... Um, it would be very important to know where she was sitting. Alright, then I guess they're forcing me over here. Tristan. But no one can freely enter or exit the Opera House at the moment. If you wish to leave, you must register your identity with us first. Uh, no! We're not leaving! We're representing Linny and Lynette as attorneys, so we're investigating the case! Were you always guarding this entrance? Yes! After the Chief Justice gave the order, everyone coming in or out must undergo a strict inspection. No, before that. So, the missing girl couldn't have left from here. At least, not from that point on. Yeah, what about during the show? I doubt there was much opportunity then, either. How can you be so sure, hmm? Well, because I was in charge of security near the entrance at that time. I couldn't see Linny's performance from here, which was quite a shame. Just my luck. But still, I did not abandon my post. And I stayed put no matter how loud the applause was. If someone had so much as even approached the door, I would have noticed it, let alone if they had tried to leave. We Melazines are good at that sort of thing, you know. I'll take your word for it. Maybe. So, it's safe to say the girl couldn't have left through here. All right, thank you for your help. This will be useful info. Entrances and exits to the Opera House. No one left the Opera House during the magic show, and after the incident happened, only those who had their identities cleared by the guards could leave. We've checked everything of note here at the performance venue. Hmm. My mom wonders how Lenny's discussion with the guards is going. I can't imagine this Let's going go well. See, shall we? Understood. Then I will be going with you. Just so you're aware, I will be monitoring your actions and making notes as necessary. Very good. Thanks for being so agreeable. I'd pull a rose out of my hat as a gift for you if I could. No bribes. You may spare the pleasantries. I'm just doing my job. Yeah. You've arrived. Uh, who's this? Oh, we picked up some new friends. Me? <laughs> I'm Spina de Rosula's guardian angel. If you've got a problem, I've got the firepower. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little carried away there. Call me Navia. I'm a partner of theirs and will be helping investigate this whole situation. And these are my companions. Would you mind if they join as well? Hmm? Fine by me. Oh, new helpers? I would be most grateful. Well, let's just say we're tagging along. It's not every day you get to see the secrets behind magic performed on such a large scale. <laughs> I appreciate your kind interest. Come with me. We'll be heading below stage. All right. Yeah, that's where they put all the trap doors. Huh? Below stage? Yes, a world of secrets is hidden beneath this magic box, prepared specifically for this switcheroo trick. But before I reveal everything, you should have a look first. Notice anything strange here? As in the positioning of the box, or what it was designed like, or what's inside of it? I'm not trying to be dramatic. Remembering the details of a trick will help you understand the methods used to perform it more easily. Huh. Weren't there balloons and other decorations here? Where did all that go? Ah, good eye. That said, you're still far from discovering the answer. Yeah, the back of the door isn't the same, apparently. Uh, the back? You mean the inside of the door? What's different about it? Paimon didn't notice anything. <laughs> Very good indeed. I thought you might not be able to catch that, given that you were sitting in the first row. The back of this door was patterned, 
Those patterns are now gone, replaced by a smooth wooden board. So, if you put two and two together, what do you get? Yeah, there's another box inside this one. <laughs> exactly. All right, let's go. I'll tell you how it works as we head down. Oh, so there was a passageway under the magic box! I guess so. <laughs> I knew you'd figure out most of it as soon as you saw this place. The two magic boxes are positioned right above the two entrances of the tunnel. See this flatbed trolley? The box with the lucky audience member in it would be shuttled over to the other side using the trolley. This trolley can raise and lower and even rotate, ensuring that the box will face in the right direction. I see. So that's the purpose of the box inside another box. Precisely. The inner box would descend after the audience member was put inside and be moved along the trolley, all while the outer box would remain on stage as if nothing had ever changed. So that's how you did it! Once the box was lowered, the trolley would store some energy through this device here, with which it would complete the rest of the steps. The audience member would only be able to feel some slight movements in the dark, and by the time she walked out, she would already be back on stage. Yeah, and what about your side? Right! You were talking that whole time, and you even came out for a moment near the end! Ah, yes. A phonograph operated by Lynette was used to achieve that effect. My assistant and I had already scripted our conversation beforehand. When the countdown began, I had already gone to the opposite box via a tunnel using that ladder. And what about Lynette? Where was she? I was in the mezzanine space in the back of the box. Oh, interesting! That's how we were able to coordinate Lenny's lines with the assistant. And by the way, I was the one who walked out of the box at the end. Wait, how? I mean, we are twins. All it takes is a change of clothes, and no one can tell who's who. <laughs> and that's my favorite part of this trick. But you, but Lenny Only Lynette have a tail. and I can perform it. But Lenny doesn't have a tail, though. Or... Yeah, and he doesn't have cat ears, either. He's no Mikote. So that's how it all worked! Wow! Every detail you revealed was more amazing than the last! Yeah, a lot of thought was put into this. Lynette would briefly walk out of the box and then go back in, jumping into the tunnel and escaping before the box on the trolley could finish ascending. And then I walk out of the other box in the audience area, and the trick would be complete. The operative word here being wood. Yeah, wood. But as you saw, Cal was in the box, not our audience member. She, on the other hand, mysteriously vanished. We really don't know how that happened. Yeah, we're not at that point yet. If not for that interlude, this would have been an astonishing trick. I probably never would have figured out how you pulled it off. And yet, to think that someone was able to use this magic trick to commit a crime. Could we have a look around? I think we can come up with some more leads. This is the scene of the crime, so Linny and Lynette are not permitted to stay here. I'll escort them back up. Yes, of course. No need to be so strict now. I won't disappear into thin air, you know. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, I thought, um... I saw a different color vision on Lenny's back. He had a fire elemental, not a water elemental. What's going on with that? I thought he said that he and Lynette had water visions on them before they were relieved of them. Thanks, everyone. We're counting on you. The magic trick. Lenny gave a detailed account of how the trick was supposed to work. By using a box inside a box, the idea was for the box containing the audience member to be transported across via a tunnel underneath, and Lenny himself would also use this tunnel to get to the other side. Meanwhile, having changed her outfit, Lynette and her assistant would take charge of on-stage interactions. On-stage magic box structure. The magic box on stage has an additional layer to its rear in which Lynette, in Lenny's clothes, remained hidden. She would appear at the end of the magic trick and lead people to believe that Lenny had been able to instantly move the box to the box on the other side. Audience side magic box structure. 
The magic box at the center of the audience stands has two layers, and beneath it is an entrance to an underground tunnel. This was how the tricky audience member was meant to have been transported without the audience noticing. Examine the control board. This should be for the control device for the trolley. It seems to be able to operate automatically. Need more things. Investigate the boss. Uh, the floor is wet. Please be careful not to slip. Speaking of which, why would there be water here? Maybe it was for a trick? along tracks from start to finish. It couldn't have hit the vase at this distance. Hmm. Let's note this down too and think about it later. Yeah. Broken flower vase. There are many pieces of broken flower vase on one side of the tunnel. All the water within has been spilled. Judging from the distance, it seems unlikely that it was knocked over by the trolley meant to transport the magic box. Oh, there are other things over here, including ladder. A ladder is required in order to turn into the magic box above. And we have over here. Huh. What's this? Looks like a hook tied to the end of a rope. Huh? There's all kinds of odds and ends here. Yeah. Lenny didn't mention this earlier. Perhaps it was a prop for a different trick. But why would it have been left here? Whatever it is, let's make a note of it first. Yeah, we'll try and put two and two together later. A ro dropped hook rope. A rope that has fallen to the ground. A metal hook has been tied to one end of this rope. Its use is unclear. For now. Maybe it was used to carry off the girl. Investigate clothing. Oh, these are the clothes that the lady chosen from the audience was wearing, right? Her clothes are here, but she's nowhere to be found. Yeah, Lenny didn't mention the guest having a wardrobe change. Right. And do you really need to do that if you're kidnapping them? Also, why did your glasses suddenly go um, stereotypical Japanese anime spiral mode? Ugh. Using Paimon doesn't want to be a detective anymore. <laughs> the young lady's clothes. The young the clothes belong to Halsey, the lady who went missing, were found in the tunnel. The reason for this remains unknown. Tracks, sure. High precision is required to complete this magic show, and tracks are perfect for making the trolley stay on its designated course. Okay, so yeah, that's all checked off. I leave nothing to chance. He's all checked off. We already examined the tracks. Storage boxes. All kinds of pops and costumes are haphazardly stuffed inside. Two things. Investigate the vent. What is this place? It seems someone could fit through here. Huh. Could this have been the suspect's escape route? Hmm, alone, perhaps. But if they had to pull another person with them, this space would be too narrow. But there are no other ways in or out of here. Yeah, other than those that go through the boxes? Oh, you're right! Let Paimon write that down. Tunnel vents. The tunnel vent looks like it could allow one person passage, barely. But leaving along with the missing lady seems an unrealistic prospect. Then 
the seems trolley. Like the trolley is crucial for transporting the magic box to the other side. The culprit must have used this to execute their plan. Yes, let's head back up. Oh, we're all clear. Yeah, it looks like we may have checked everything off then. Return to the surface. So what happens when we pull it from Well, up? we've ascertained the state of the crime scene. Let's find a place to sort out our findings once Malus returns. It seems to me that there are several things that don't add up here. Apologies for the wait, demoiselle. So, what did the guards say? Did the criminal escape through the vent? They believe the odds of that are very low, since the vent leads to the Opera House's basement. The guards have checked the area carefully. No one left through the basement during the performance or after the incident, and no one was found hiding there. So the tunnels become like a secret chamber then! You know, like the kind you usually see in novels! I guess. Hmm. The plot thickens. Halsey's disappearance and Cowell's death are both quite inexplicable. Huh. No wonder Farina was so confident in her accusation. All the current evidence points toward Linny and Lynette. In other words, the charges are very likely to be upheld unless we make some considerable progress. Charges and then trial. So if the charges are upheld, they'll announce a sentence? That's right. This is how a trial goes in the Opera House. During the proceedings, the Chief Justice and the Oratrice will hear statements from both sides. All right. That's right. This is how indemnidium is produced. The statements from both sides, the defenses from attorneys, witness testimonies, and even the audience's emotions will all be projected on the oratrice. To put it simply, it's as if the oratrice has its own will and is a judge in its own right. This also precludes any kind of favoritism on the part of the Chief Justice. And not that this has ever happened anyway. All right. Once both sides have finished speaking, the Chief Justice will make his final decision. This, too, will be used by the Oratrice as a reference. Then, finally, the Oratrice will be consulted by officials. The result it returns is the will of justice itself. Huh? So that machine is the one that actually decides? I'm on that novelet called the Shots. Not In practice, there is very little difference. Both have always come to the same judgment. Which is why people have great faith in the Chief Justice. Ah, yes, the guards also asked me to convey that none of us will be allowed to leave this place before the trial. Oh, great. That means I can't grind. Huh? Why? Because we've chosen to act as the twins' proxies. That makes us persons related to the case. Uh, they're concerned that we might be colluding with outside parties. Or that we might find outside help to disrupt the case. And even if that were not so, it could prove problematic if we happen to spread key information about the case ahead of time. I'm ready to break out at any time. <laughs> really? Whoa, whoa! There's no need for that! Paima thinks they have a point! That said, are they providing food? <laughs> of course. I just hope you don't mind the lack of options. I'm afraid that catering to all tastes is not in the cards, nor is any guarantee of balanced nutrition. Sure. In that case, let's just sort out our findings together here. Pity. I was hoping to take you to try some of Fontaine's famous desserts, too. Maybe when this is over? I mean, what better way to properly think through our findings than over some tea and sweets? Huh. Waking out suddenly doesn't seem like such a bad idea after all. Yeah, not a good time, Paimon. Just kidding, just kidding. Paimon will still do her best, even if there are no snacks. Hmm? What do you mean, no snacks? Of course we'll have snacks. If we cannot buy some, then we'll simply make some. Huh? Here? But how? Yeah, there's no cooking fire. Understood, demoiselle. Everyone, please come with me. Well, what do you got in store for us? Wait, you're carrying a portable stove with you? Oh, really? 
Yes, I must be prepared to meet the demoiselle's baking needs whenever the fancy strikes her. I have eggs, sugar, and almonds at the ready. <laughs> <laughs> Good Sounds work, like you marzipan. Two. Then I'll get to it. Please sit tight for a moment. You'll get to taste my awesome snacks soon enough. These three are quite the interesting group. <laughs> Must be among the, what they're all about, yeah. Navia methodically handles the ingredients and pulls fresh macarons out of the oven in short order. Oh, and by my dad, it smelled good while it was still in the oven! Oh, it's even better now. Paimon can't stop drooling. <laughs> From the way you had these two guys carrying all that stuff around, Paimon thought you'd have them do more during the baking process. But you ended up doing the entire thing by yourself! Beating the egg whites, grinding almonds, everything! I was applauding. And I was, I applauding. was giving encouraging <laughs> smiles. Uh, Paimon was just thinking. Aren't you worried about getting your fancy dress dirty, beating egg whites, and baking like this? Wow, didn't expect that. Well, I don't think it's carved in stone anywhere that fancy ladies can only read books, sip tea, ride horses, and play the piano. I just really enjoy making snacks. Don't underestimate beating egg weights, by the way. It's a real arm workout. You also need to beat them to just the right consistency, or your macarons will crack. <laughs> wow. Anyway, give these a try, fresh out of the oven. There's three for each of us. Only three? Better than nothing, right? Well, eating too many sweet treats might send all that sugar to your head. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to think clearly about the case on a sugar rush, would you? Tea is ready to be served as well. This is Demoiselle's favorite. Strong black tea with a floral fragrance that clears the mind and lifts the spirit. No need for concern. I'm merely doing as I should. Of course. And so. All right then, <clears throat> down to business. As Paimon mentioned previously, the tunnel seems to be something of a secret chamber. However, we can assume that Linny and Lynette were not alone within it. Some criminal also occupied its sealed confines. The magician twins could have committed the crimes, of course, but they lack any logical motive. Exactly! Why would they do such a thing right when everyone was watching? Yeah, so apart from the twins... The flower vase and the thud we heard during the performance could indicate some altercation between Halsey and the criminal in the tunnel, resulting in the shattering of the vase, the discarding of her clothes, and her abduction. Perhaps the criminal thought that since she was chosen from the crowd, she would be too easy to identify if she was still wearing the same clothes. Paimon thinks that makes sense, but the real trouble is... Yeah, there's no evidence that this third person even exists. <sighs> True. None of the clues we found thus far support the existence of this third person. But the only people left to consider are both technically victims. Whether it's the missing girl, Halsey, or poor Cowl. Huh. Could Halsey have secretly made modifications to the magic props in order to murder Cowell before making her escape? She had no way of knowing how the trick worked. Yeah, that's pretty out there. Uh, that's right. And even if she had tampered with the setup, she would need to understand the entire trick to pull it off. Nor does she have any motive. The guards said that she has never had any dealings with the magic troops' members. <sighs> Were we not thorough enough in our search? From the sound of things, this is turning into an impossible case. Your macarons are amazing though, Navia. They smell great! They're nice and crisp and super sweet! Well, at least she's able to get that kind of comfort. <laughs> they are my specialty, after all. And I see you've already had five of them. <laughs> what? Five? Oh, that can't be right! Five on only carry three! Honest! <laughs> Please don't worry about it. At my age, a few less sweets might actually be a good thing. Uh, no, no. Being greedy is one thing, but Paimon knows how to count. Besides, Paimon knows that if she ate too many, then others wouldn't have enough. <laughs> yeah, everyone loves how Wait, much you love eating. Even you don't believe Paimon? Uh, how could you? If Paimon ate those two extra macarons, then may they turn into 
right, you get it. Well, I suppose one of us might have gotten uh. too engrossed in our chat and eaten them by mistake. No big deal. Belus, set up the stove again, if you would. Again? What are you doing? There's Making a round Making sure two. everyone gets three macarons, of course. Exactly. We don't want to trouble you. As you wish, demoiselle. And yeah, I have the egg, sugar, and almonds. Uh, well, this really is your hobby, huh? It is. Now he does a second round of baking over the two missing macarons. Of the discussion that follows, then does not yield much progress. Well, that's it for snack time. I'm going to have another look around the area. I don't know what we're looking for yet, but we've still got some time. As attorneys, I suggest the two of you think the case over again. <laughs> it would be awkward if you got all tongue-tied on stage during the trial. Of course. All right, thanks for your help and for the snacks. <laughs> it was nothing. A small task for the Spina di Rosula. Silver, Malus, it's time to go. I'll be back if I find anything new. Probability of third person being involved. Neither Cowell nor Halsey had a motive, but having talked to Navia, the likelihood of a third person being involved seems very low too. Wait right, until the trial on the following to day. Together. We've got to get our defense ready for the trial. Oh, oh am I allowed to break out? Be a long... I am allowed to break out. Hey, Luna, you might just get your chance to get in the game. Oh, where do I want to go? Oh yeah, I haven't gotten my um, commissions yet from the Adventurers Guild yet. Sure, at the very least do that, because yeah, I did do that before I came on the air. Note that even this area will interrupt your story experience. This may affect your current quest progress. Ah, oh, damn it. Nope. Uh. Fine. I guess we're stuck. Guess I gotta play this out. Participate in the trial. Damn it. Oh, in the meantime. Yeah. Not creepy in the slightest. And so... What do we do? The whole situation is so confusing! I do have some thoughts. As Good in, plan. I'm gonna be needing Impossible your guys' things thoughts. things don't just happen. We'll get to the truth one way or another. Uh, just relax. Even if everyone else suspects Lenny and Lynette, at least we will be supporting them from the stands. Besides, I doubt Farina understands any more about what happens than we do. <laughs> Thanks, Navia. Well, we'll be going then. Best of luck to you. All right. Yeah, if I need any help with the finer points, I'm gonna need to ask you guys for oh, help. Finally, you're back. Well, how did your investigation go? To be honest, you might be disappointed. No, no. We're already very grateful that you were willing to help. Well, now, don't you all look disappointed? Don't tell me that your investigation came up empty handed. That was to be expected, of course. The guilty can never produce proof of their innocence. But don't let that stop you. I shall be terribly disappointed should you, my most anticipated foe, concede so easily. Also, why are we speaking to each other from opposite sides of the balcony? Since both parties are present, I declare that the trial regarding the magic show incident is now in session. Firstly, in order for the audience to understand the causes and results of the incident, could we please have Mr. Linney explain the trick? Yes, of course. I will explain while Lynette demonstrates on stage. All the necessary items have been prepared. Linney clearly reveals the details. Everyone in the audience is stunned. Thank you, Mr. Linney. 
In that case, I take your statement to be that you ran to and remained hidden within the magic box in the audience stands once the trick began, and thus could not have committed the crime. Is this correct? Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. In that case, I call upon the prosecution. Lady Farina, do you wish to refute his statement in any way? Why, of course I do. Allow me to take the first shot and break this case wide open. Mr. Lenny is clearly lying. There is no way you could have been in the box the whole time if you were to abduct Halsey and murder Cowell. In fact, I'd say you were hardly in that tunnel at all. That is simply your hypothesis based on the presumption that I'm guilty. Yeah, where's the actual evidence? Oh, is that so? And if I may ask, what did you hear while you were inside your box? The roaring countdown of the crowd, of course. That's how I kept track of the time and built anticipation for the finale. And you didn't hear anything else at all? Nothing that might leave an impression of any kind? No, nothing. I see. But when the count reached 30 seconds or so, there was a thud. One so loud that I believe practically everyone heard it. Huh? Hey, hang on. Something's not right here. Is this where we come in? How could Lenny not know about that sound? Yeah, I'm sure he could have heard a noise that loud from inside the box. Unless it was soundproofed? I was right by the box, and I definitely heard the thud. Look at those scales! Could those mean- Yeah, represent the Oratrice's stance on the trial. <laughs> well then, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to use the words of the magician himself. You never know what can happen in the blink of an eye. Indeed, it seems his alibi can also collapse in the blink of an eye. <laughs> of course, I have armed myself to do far more than smash your alibi. Confidence cannot go unfounded, and my foundations are rock solid. How are they now? Tell me, aren't you and Lynette actually from the House of the Hearth? The House of the Hearth? Fatui? No wonder they did something like this. Oh, great. So the serial disappearances were the Fatui's doing. Now it all makes sense. I've got a feeling that what happened on stage probably wasn't just an accident. That's irrelevant. Our identities have nothing to do with what happened. Indeed. Then perhaps you could tell us everything that happened during that one minute. Your first priority is to prove yourself innocent after all. I'm sure there is little that needs to be kept secret now. Unless your script already has holes in it. So what am I doing here? <sighs> the Outlander is speechless. My oh my, don't they look flabbergasted. <laughs> now comes the infighting in Discord, I suppose. This was almost too easy. Well, considering you roped me into this mess. Oh, good thing I made all those preparations. Seems the all-nighter I pulled last night is really paying off. And why am I suddenly getting that this under your breath um, statement here is a confession that you may have something to do with this? Yeah, there with the Fatui. Order! Order! Mr. Linney, allow me to re-establish the facts. Lady Farina has raised two points. First, when the thud was heard in the Opera House, you were neither in the box nor the tunnel. Second, you and Ms. Lynette are both members of the House of the Hearth. Are these claims true? <sighs> yeah, there's no doubt a magical ability. Magician's ability to con others. Given how Lenny is concealed as identity, this could have all been set up beforehand. Plus, Child is here in Fontaine along with other house operatives. There must be some other scheme at work here. I've been a victim of such schemes before, and now. Yeah, now I'm Please having to help Please answer Fatui. my question, Mr. Lenny. I'm sorry. Yes, they're true, Your Honor. 
I knew it! Well, that's it. We might as well move on to the sentencing already. What should we do now? Yeah. Can I finally get in on this? Granted. Yeah. My defense cannot proceed. My clients withheld key information. In that case, what is your request? We have things that must be discussed. Is that really necessary? They're already as good as guilty. The defendant deceived their own attorneys. What is there left to discuss? Order! Order, I say! Your request is reasonable, and we shall adjourn. This trial will reconvene in one hour. <laughs> so you would stick to Mr. Linney's defense even after knowing what you do now? You certainly have more professionalism than I thought. In that case, my dear audience, let's allow the joy of victory to steep for a little while longer. <laughs> Well, of course, the journey you meet backstage. <laughs> yeah. We want answers now! This is why our arms are crossed. And why well, Miss Paimon has her hands on her hips. Awkward. I didn't think the Hydro Archon would dig all that up. I'm sorry, Traveler and Paimon. Yeah. Sorry. Ugh. Paimon doesn't know where to start. We trusted you two. We based our entire reasoning on the assumption that you weren't bad guys. Not to set the wrong tone or anything, but Paimon's really mad! I'm very sorry. I know you're angry, and reasonably so, but please, let me explain. I know you've clashed with the Vatui several times before. I wouldn't be surprised if just hearing the word is enough to make you upset. But our organization is very, very large, and the Harbingers have very different personalities and goals. Right now, we want to save people. As many as we can. That's right. I'm sure we're on the same page when it comes to this nation and the disaster that its people might face. I knew if it weren't for our respective identities, we could become good friends. That's why I didn't wish to flat out lie to you, well, you but did. chose to hide some details instead. The truth is very important, but... Being completely transparent about everything would see us spending more effort than we need to. Yeah, how do we know this isn't all just another lie? Right. So, you be the judge. Heck, if I were you, I fear that I'd even struggle to trust me at this point. You met a Fatus who works as a magician, a trickster by trade. All by coincidence, too. But still, I'm asking you to trust me. I am no criminal. At least, not in this case. Sorry. Please forgive us. Well, you both say that, but... Yeah, explain the other issue first. Right. Let's hear your answer first, and no lies now! Of course. I'll answer any question you ask. We've been trying to find out how the Oratrice operates. We want to know why it has consciousness. Why can it deliver sentences accurately? During our investigations, we learned that the machine's core is beneath it. From that moment on, Lynette and I have been designing this box swap trick with the objective of getting close to the core. Is that why you needed a whole minute? That's right. In truth, the audience would take about 75 seconds to count down from 60, while I would only need 15 to get to the opposite box. So, after jumping into the tunnel, I accessed the Opera House basement via the vent and went to investigate the room in which the core is stored. That air vent was created during the construction of the tunnel specifically to execute this step. Uh, yeah, and? Well, nothing. As soon as I reached that room and was about to investigate, I heard someone's voice. Which should have been impossible, of course. I was quite certain that I was the only one in the room. Maybe it was the voice that I heard at the start of the stream? That voice seemed to recognize me and tried to speak to me. I chose to err on the side of caution and retreated the way I came. On the way back, I saw the broken vase and the clothes on the ground, but the countdown was almost finished, so there wasn't time to give it any thought. After that, the homicide occurred just as you saw. Well, that explains why you didn't hear the thud. Yeah, why would you understand how this thing works? Because of that prophecy I told you about, of course. We must know all we can about this nation's secrets in order to deal with that prophesized crisis. That's the only way we can save everyone. So, there you have it. The whole truth. I swear, I didn't hide anything from you this time. It was never my wish to proceed under this cloud of mistrust either. But, like I said earlier, you can be the judge. 
If you want to leave because you don't trust the Fatui, there's nothing I can do to stop you. Well, Traveler, you decide. Paimon will follow your lead however you choose. I believe in the facts, yeah. Um, I believe that judgment will be dispensed as it should, but yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks for giving us a chance. The current problem is that the scales are tipped pretty badly against you two. If we want to refute the Hydro Archon's accusations, we're going to need a seriously watertight defense. We already have the key evidence. Huh? Hmm. Oh, Paimon thinks she gets what you mean. And then he s claims that he headed into the chamber containing the Oratrice co Corp on entering the tunnel and did not witness the crime taking place and thus did not hear the thud. The voice in the Oratrice Corp chamber. Then he claims to have made a, heard a mysterious voice within the chamber that houses the Oratrice Corp within the Opera House's underground structures. Continue taking part in the trial. Alright then. We can put him in the ground at any time. <laughs> we for German ends and the nail biting trial reconvenes. Both parties have returned to their positions. Let us continue the trial. When last we left off, Mr. Linney acknowledged the new evidence presented by Lady Farina as fact. Therefore, Lady Farina may continue stating her reconstruction of the events. Ugh, that took long enough. Now then, if everyone would lend me their attention, at this stage, let's revisit that scene from Linny's perspective. Based on the opposition's account of events, you can identify loopholes in their statements. Use evidence and clues obtained during the investigation to refute any erroneous assertions of fact and replace them with new inferences. Use your, refut your refutations to convince the audience and more up and obtain more support from the people. The orchards will display such shifts clearly. When you find and refute all incorrect content, you can complete the cycle of refutation and unveil the truth. Here we go. As the countdown began, he entered the tunnel. All right. When the flatbed trolley passed, he opened the box and got into an altercation with Halsey, which caused the loud thud. He did not realize that the sound could be heard by everyone in the opera house, which is why he claimed earlier that he could not hear the sound. Finally, he used the vase to knock her out before making her change clothes to prevent others from recognizing her. At this time, Cowell arrived in the tunnel, having heard that strange noise, and caught Linny red-handed. I'm um, having a hard time believing that. So Linny proceeded to knock him out too before stuffing him into that box. Afterward, Linny passed the unconscious Halsey to his accomplice through the magic box in the audience stands, before operating the devices such that Cowell's death would be ruled an accident. And there you have it. That's the truth behind what happened. Does the defendant's side have any objections to Lady Farina's description of the events? Here we go. The key to refuting Lady Farina is the order of events, what Linny experienced, and what he saw. Okay. Linny entered the tunnel as the countdown began. Identify new poles. Yeah. Then he claims that he headed to the chamber containing the Oratrice Corps upon entering the tunnel and did not witness the crime taking place and thus did not hear the thud. Um, no one left the Opera House. Then he claims to hear a mysterious voice within the Oratrice Corps. The young lady's clothes belong to Halsey. Strange sound during the magic show, during the switch that many audience members heard. Okay. As they head to the chamber containing the Orchard's Corp upon entering the tunnel. Uh, Luna, if, if you ever need to step in, let me know.
Yeah, I just want to make sure that I'm not screwing anything up here. Not witness the... Because, yeah, I, I want to make sure that it's all in order. Is that he had to or trace continue? Yeah, he did. Hmm. Seems this won't produce a particularly no, effective rebuttal. So. No one left the opera house during, during the show. The many audience members heard. Hmm. Seems. Okay, so there's no alien. There's no errors in. Um, choosing wrong. Hmm. Am I missing a piece of evidence? Hmm. Seems this won't. That's all I have. Hmm. Um, what? Did I miss something? Attacks Halsey. According to Linny, he left via the vent after entering the tunnel. He couldn't have had that altercation with Halsey. Okay, so Linny leaves the tunnel, kidnaps Halsey. Was it this? Hmm. It was an audible thump that many audience members heard. Hmm. And you obviously can't pick the same thing twice. Linny went to the room that contains the Oratrice's core. This is the actual truth. Yeah, knocked Cowl out, no. Hmm. Yeah, the young lady's clothes, maybe? Lenny did not take part in the underground altercation. He only witnessed traces of the aftermath. Oh, hold on. Not completely. Um, attention! Ace Detective Paimon has something to say! When the countdown started, Lenny did indeed go into the tunnel. But he immediately used a vent to access the Opera House basement, which is where the underground core of the Oratrice is stored. Once he reached that area, he heard a voice in what should have been an empty room. Since he felt something was amiss, he returned immediately. The crime scene had already developed by the time he reached the tunnel again. And in order to complete the magic trick, he did not remain there for any length of time. Finally, he reached the surface, and that was when the accident happened from his point of view. Therefore, he's innocent! Oh, balance achieved. It was. In other words, you believe that he knew nothing of the incident? That's right! And I believe my position's reasoning is flawed. <laughs> my reasoning? Yeah, you say that Lao cow bumped into Lee by chance, or the on-stage equipment was clearly tampered with. If that's the case, then if Cow hadn't entered the tunnel, who was the entire setup meant to kill? Assuming that what you say is true, Linny only needed to kidnap the young girl to cause a new disappearance case. What would the point of killing someone on stage be? Oh, they have a point. <laughs> that's right, you tell them! And that's why they're partners of mine. They've managed to turn things around. Oh, well, your denial is very strident, 
I'll give you that. But what proof do you have to back your claims? Yeah, do you happen to remember? <laughs> of course I do. If he had been in the magic box the whole time, how could he have not heard that sound? Why do you ask? <laughs> You're saying that he wasn't? Your claim has now become my weapon. Your claim has also become a critical clue, yep. Choose the most reasonable evidence based on the information. Okay, it even says it's irrelevant. Not, not yet investigated. Oh, all this is considered irrelevant. Okay. Yeah. Is it this step nine that I never found? Many audience members heard. Um. Not much here to select. Is it this? Are you sure we don't need to give this more thought? Paimon thinks there's something off here. Uh, if you think so, there, Paimon. Yeah, there's only like three options. That's right! Lenny wasn't in the box or in the tunnel! That's why he didn't hear anything strange during the performance. This means that when the crime happened, Linny had already entered the basement via the vent. The same clue you used to disprove his alibi has now become the best proof! Ha <laughs> ha! How do you like that? <laughs> well played. <laughs> to think you'd use such logic. Uh, it's more like random chance, really. Well then, if it wasn't Linny who committed the crimes, then who was it? Yeah. This is where our third person comes in. Select the gear icons in the interface to check their corresponding case questions. Select answers and fill all the empty gears to verify the correctness of your deduction. If you made mistakes, you must make another selection from the remaining options. Yeah, we more or less are, aren't we, Bubba? Once you've answered all the questions correctly, you can complete this logic chain. The guard's investigation report indicates the fireworks released near the end of the show ignited and burned through the ropes suspending the water tank above the stage. This caused the water tank to fall and kill Cowell in the box below. If Lenny is no longer under suspicion, only the other members of the troop who would have been able to tamper with the props. Lenny gave a detailed account of how the trick was supposed to work. By using a box inside a box, the idea was for the box containing the audience member to be transported across via a tunnel underneath, and Lenny himself would also use this tunnel to get to the other side. Having changed her outfit, Lynette and her assistant would take charge of an on-stage interactions. The clothes belonging to Halsey, the lady who went missing, were found in the tunnel. The reason for this remains unknown. Select any clue to view detailed information. Could there have been a third person involved? Is that really a possibility? Halsey is the missing person and an ordinary audience member. Or did she have her own scheme all along? Don't put a pastor. The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. He would have been able to tamper with the equipment. Oh, is this like clue? Halsey is the missing person and an ordinary audience member. Or did she have her own scheme all along? Oh. Yeah, we, we've got a coin toss between in the, the audience. The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. He would have been able to tamper with the equipment. 
hypothesis is correct. Huh? Uh, that can't be right. Are you serious? Uh, um, the killer was, in fact, Cowl, the deceased! Oh, is that so? How interesting! Let's hear your reasoning, then. What I must do next is recreate the truth. What Cowl did, and how he went from would-be perpetrator to victim. You key information. No one entered or left the opera house through its entrances. So where would the criminal have wanted to take Halsey? The deceased's name is Cowell. Lin oh. Linny was not in the tunnel at that moment, which gave our criminal ample time. It would have been tough for both people to fit into that vent. They would likely have bumped into Linny as well. The sound we heard may have come from a clash between the missing Halsey and the criminal. Halsey's clothing was in the tunnel, so there must have been some fear that she would attract attention. Oh, I have to put all four slots in. Oh, it's not already preset to me. No one entered or left the opera house through its entrances. So where would the criminal have wanted to take Halsey? Halsey's clothing was in the tunnel, so there must have been some fear that she would attract attention. Who's the punch suspect currently? The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. He would have been able to tamper with the equipment. Where'd the missing Halsey go? The sound we heard may have come from a clap. It would have been tough for both people to fit into that vent. Oh, I've already logged my answers in. Shit. The sound we heard may have come from a clap. Okay, so it's giving me... Okay. How could various visions Linny has been unable to interfere with the crime? Linny was not in the tunnel at that moment. It would have been tough for both people to fit into that vent. They would likely have bumped... The sound we heard may have come from a clap. Where the missing Halsey go? It would have been tough for both people... Still no. Oh, well, it's coin toss no now. Entered or left the Halsey's clothing was in the tunnel. Okay. Well, it means there's only one option. No one entered or. Kuno must have understood the methods behind Lenny's magic trick and must have been in a position to easily modify the equipment. Leaving aside how he died, Cowell had all the means to commit the crime at his disposal. The strange noise could likely have been the sound of Cowell and Halsey struggling. Lenny was not in the tunnel for one minute. This would have given time for Cowell to bring Halsey out of the magic box in the audience stands. But according to the guard's testimony, no one left, entered or left the opera house, so even if he had taken her, there'd be no means of exiting. Exiting from the box would have been in full view of the audience, pretty much guaranteeing that they would have been discovered. What's wrong, Traveler? Are you still having trouble figuring things out? <laughs> I see how it is. So this was all just a bluff. Yeah, I think you and have here me. I thought you had something to show for it. But it seems you're still far from the truth. Look, since we're at a dead end, why not consider a different track? Just like the trick as it transpired, the end result must have been utterly different from the magician's initial design. If only we knew how Halsey disappeared. Well, that would be nice, but the tunnel only has three exits, and none of them seem very likely. And it's not like this is a magic trick where you can just make a real live person disappear. You know, like you did from that water tank, Lynette. Yeah, escaping from the water tank? <laughs> Excuse my 
my interruption, dear opponents. But do you not see that the crowd is growing impatient? There is no greater sin in this opera house than an awkward delay in the performance. I agree. Oh, but that's why the skill is to be back. If the defense is unable to make further effective arguments, we will move on to the next stage of the trial. Yeah, hold, don't go so fast there. Lily was not in the tunnel at that moment, which gave our criminal ample time. The sound we heard may have come from a clash between the missing Halsey and the criminal. The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. He would have been able to tamper with the equipment. It comes down to clue four. No one entered or left the opera house through its entrances. So where would the criminal have wanted to take Halsey? Is it this? The vase was not broken by chance. It was used to cover important evidence. The water. Yeah, Th this didn't show up at all before. Yeah, why wasn't the vase there originally? from the water tank vanishing gradually and leaving only clothes behind. If there's a similar method where a person could be transformed into water... <laughs> Just a moment, please. I do hope you know how preposterous you sound at the moment. Oh, I know. How could a person ever be transformed into water? This is reality we're talking about here, not some magic trick. Can examine Cal's personal effects. <sighs> Must we really? I should think that of anyone. Your friend Linny already knows this truth very well. Magic tricks are ultimately just illusions and misdirection. But Halsey's disappearance is very real. We're talking about two completely different things! Even so, I trust the Traveler's judgment. The truth must be out there somewhere. Perhaps some new line of reasoning may open if we try to gather all the focal points that don't make sense. Since Cal was the deceased, we haven't placed much attention on him. But given that we aren't making much progress with the case, it wouldn't hurt to have a look at his belongings, would it? <sighs> People really do come up with all sorts of harebrained schemes when at the end of their rope. The way I see it, your suggestion that we broaden the scope of our investigation is nothing but a tactic for stalling the trial. Or maybe gives us the evidence that we need to finally shut you up. Nevertheless, I believe that this is a reasonable request on the part of an attorney. Since the trial does indeed appear to be at an impasse, I believe that additional evidence may help us make more progress. Guards, please step into the lounge and examine the personal effects of the deceased Cowell. After some time, a guard returns with news. We are still examining the items, but we have already made critical progress that we feel must be shared with everyone post-haste. Please. We discovered several test tubes of fluid within Cowell's baggage, each labeled separately. The notebook in his backpack claims that these fluids are... Water from the Primordial Sea. The Primordial Sea. The note's contents also indicate that Cowell belonged to an organization that sells illegal drugs and that he had an accomplice. Oh, great. The notebook has many entries concerning safe usage of these fluids, in which the keyword dissolve appears many times. One of these tubes was labeled Opera Epicles, along with yesterday's date. It is empty. The notes also state that these dissolution properties work exclusively on people from Fontaine. It's likely that Halsey was chosen as some sort of test subject. As such, we believe that the defense's hypothesis is, in fact, supported by sufficient evidence. Could it be? You've got to be kidding! People dissolving into water? Could something so ridiculous actually be true? Wait a moment. This reminds me of a certain prophecy, but... It's just a coincidence, isn't it? Huh. If people can become water, does that mean that the water tank's real use was as a means to hide water stains? And if Cowell was targeting that girl... Wait just a minute. Could that mean... 
You two, with me, quick! Demoiselle, wait! What about your partners? Mm, let's go. Just trust me. Yeah. You're about to blow this wide open. Order! Order! <laughs> it is undeniable that further examination of the deceased's personal effects has yielded some surprising results. But we cannot yet verify the veracity of these clues. Still, let us assume that these clues are indeed authentic, albeit with the understanding that Ms. Halsey has yet to be found. Guards, please continue examining the items along these lines. Mr. Linney, it appears your hypothesis is supported by the evidence, so please continue speaking. Of course. Thank you, Your Honor. If we uphold this hypothesis, I believe that many of this case's seemingly unrelated clues can be connected together. Right! Like the metal hook! That one didn't make sense at all! Hmm, let's think about this. Cowell's methods must have something to do with that water from the primordial sea. Go back over to this. Water from the primordial sea, the liquid the guards found in Cowell's luggage, seems to have the ability to dissolve Fontanians into water. Where's the pawn stuff start currently? Well, that's obviously the Mr. The deceased's Cowell. name is Cowell. Li what item did the culprit use to control the timing of the dissolution? The water this. from the primordial sea should already have been prepped before Halsey entered the magic box. Because, yeah, it can't be the hook. Now it seems like the hook rope was not meant for another magic trick but was instead some form of triggering mechanism. Meanwhile... The rope that held the water tank up was lit by the fireworks and snapped. As such, the focus here is on the water and not the tank. The water from the primordial sea should already have been prepped before Halsey entered the magic box. Well, I don't know the... Ow! Oh. The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. He the deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. The water from the primordial sea should already have been prepped before Halsey entered the magic box. Um. Now it seems like the hook rope. Yeah, I'm gonna switch it. And then it has to the be this. water from the primordial. What item did the culprit use to hide the mechanism behind the crime? The rope that held the water tank up was lit by the firework. Ugh. Lynette was in the magic box on stage the entire time. Did she have something to do with this? I remember there was something else within the inner layer of that box. Oh. Is it that though? Yes, it is. About it. In the original plan, Cowell would tamper with the water tank rope and the number selector securing his target. When the magic box containing Halsey was lowered, the metal hook would retract gradually and pierce the balloon at the top of the box. There's when the balloon, balloon attached to the box popped, the water from the primordial sea inside it would pour down and dissolve Halsey. Afterward, Cowell would enter the tunnel and break the flower vase to conceal the water inside the tunnel, with the remaining evidence being covered up by the water tank on stage. But he encountered something unexpected in the tunnel and wound up being fatally hit by the same water tank he meant to use to cover his tracks. Huh, that does make sense. That actually links together a lot of the more confusing pieces of evidence. And puts balance back in order again. Oh dear, what do I do? 
Even I think they sound convincing now. Have I falsely accused an innocent person? <sighs> what a humiliation. Well, she's not gonna go down that easily. Now, it seems like the only point of contention remaining is the exact circumstances that led to Cal's death. His notes mentioned he had an accomplice who could be related to the situation. On that note, the guards have just contacted me indicating that they uncovered new evidence. Oh, please enlighten us. I shall now invite him on stage to share it with us. Yeah. Come on out, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. We were just inspecting the luggage of the other people involved in this case. Yeah, it's Vince Vaughn. And we found an identical sample of the water from the Primordial Sea among Linny's personal effects. What? Oh, great. That can't be. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, how wonderfully comedic to have your own counterattack only to come back and wound you. Wasn't planted. <laughs> Does this not clear all doubt? My dear citizens, my loyal audience, Allow me to present my reasoning and bring this performance to a swift close. Here we go again. Linny did not need to take part in the dissolution of the young woman at all. Indeed, he did leave the scene via the vent. Having made modifications to the props beforehand, his accomplice Cowl then caused Halsey to vanish using the water from the primordial sea. But upon his return, in cruel avarice, Linny desired sole credit and prepared to do away with his partner in crime. Ultimately, he knocked Cowell out, and the tool meant to cover the crime up also became a murder weapon. Now, as much as I regret having come to such a viciously straightforward conclusion, it does seem that the famed Fatui is quite the cold-blooded and ruthless organization. Am I right, Mr. Linny? We've used up all the evidence we collected. There's no way for us to make a rebuttal here. Or can we? Is this the end of the road? Oh no! Wait a minute, no attempt? <laughs> It doesn't look like there's any way around this! Ugh. Seems using the water as new evidence was too good a move. Oh, why did this have to happen now? I think we've all seen enough now. And we have ample witnesses to my flawless reasoning. It's not exactly flawless. I believe this is indeed the finale! Now then, my good, noble Chief Justice, should we not, in your view, move? Huh? Oh, Excuse me, everyone, but I must interject! Miss, I must ask you not to shout and to respect the ongoing legal proceedings. Oh, come on, don't be hasty. I have a good reason for interrupting, you know. Now, would anyone here like to take a little break from all this debate and see a little magic? <laughs> I'll show you an amazing trick. One that can bring a young woman who has disappeared back in the flesh right before your very eyes. Please, do the honors, Mr. Linny, if you would be so kind. But what in the world is she saying? No offense, miss, but miracles like that are beyond my scope as a magician. Come on now, don't be silly. Magic is all about misdirection, isn't it? It often conceals the truth while presenting a fascinating illusion. But once everyone believes the illusion, can't magic reveal the truth to them once again? And wouldn't such a trick be the most marvelous finale to today's performance? Come on, Lenny and Lynette, give it another go! Don't worry, Spina di Rasula has made the necessary arrangements on your behalf. Hopefully they're good enough. But, as the magic makers and stars of the show, I think I should leave the final performance to you. I understand. Voila! Oh, hi. Um, uh, sorry for the interruption. Wait, isn't that Halsey? So the whole thing about people dissolving wasn't true after all? 
To be clear, I'm only here because this person told me that if I testified, the merit of doing so would lessen my sentence. Your sentence? I was hiding outside this room listening to the proceedings because I was afraid that I would be the one put on trial. I was just feeling happy that no one had noticed me. And then before I knew it, she caught me. <laughs> That'll teach you to underestimate us three. Where should I begin? <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm the one who killed Cowl. I admit it. Oh, Halsey, what have you done? What? what? Why? Firstly, my name isn't Halsey. It's Lillian, and I'm originally from Mondstadt. How did you follow us? I heard that Linny's show was going to be a real thriller, but I missed the chance to buy a ticket, so I stole one. That's how I make a living. I steal stuff here and there. And I'd never been caught before. Until now. But I was noticed at the harbor a few days ago, and I barely got away. Lenny was the one who caught me in the act. Hey! No wonder you look familiar! So you were the thief! Lenny even oh, mentioned that, that you that were person? pretty skilled! Well, and I thought that would have been the end of it, but then the number selector chose me. He even mentioned the Fortress of Meripede. That's a prison, isn't it? So you can imagine how shocked I was. I thought he was on to me for sure. So I played along with the show while looking for an opening to flee. But then I got water poured on me for no reason, and then someone jumped into the tunnel to nab me. I wasn't going to take that lying down, so I knocked him out and stuffed him into the box. <sighs> there was nowhere to run from there, though, so I had to change my clothes and hide in a box containing performance costumes. I slipped out after the first guard arrived at the scene and continued hiding inside the opera house. Can a person even hide in there? Yeah, a professional thief could make it work, yeah. But I swear, I didn't know that the water tank would fall down. Really, I swear it. Had I known that, I wouldn't have put him in the magic box. I may be a thief, but I'm no killer. Well, you're gonna have a hard time convincing them. Well, that makes everything pretty clear now, doesn't it? Um, uh, but we still could have the Archons pretty much try and shoot us down. This time, we need to tell the entire story from Lillianne's perspective. Continue to refute. So, identify loopholes. Yeah. This device was used during Lenny's magic performance. However, if the guards found it, it will generate the exact same number no matter what. I mean, to Halsey. <laughs> yeah, it's not Halsey anymore. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, which one is it? Hmm. Hmm. Right, I guess it's at the end. Hmm. Or is it? Ugh. Cal planned to use the prepared apparatus for the magic tricks to dissolve Halsey inside the magic box. As Halsey has disappeared completely unharmed before our eyes, Farina's conjecture no longer holds... holds water. And how would Halsey have reacted when the water from the primordial sea suddenly began to trickle in? Hmm. Hmm. The strange sound wasn't from a fight. It was Lillianne's attempt to break out when she was frightened. The girl burst out in fear. And fighting between Lenny and Cowell. Wanted all the credit and glory and wanted to get all of his partners as Halsey has complete, appeared completely unharmed before all of our eyes, for in his conjecture, her no longer holds water. There is evidence proving that a fight did indeed break out in the tunnel. Leading to the vase. The flower vase was not broken to cover anything up, but it was smashed during the struggle between Lillianne and Cowell. Then you knock Cowell out, then 
Using the method to dissolve young girls, he got rid of Cowell and disguised it as an accident. Yeah. After the fight, what then did Halsey do? Lillian was afraid that she would be recognized if she left, so she changed clothes and hid, biding her time. Just what one might expect of an experienced thief. Oh, don't need to go any further. And it is Detective Time on Time! Again! Having been selected out of the blue, Lillian panicked. Her panic only intensified after she entered the tunnel and had water poured on her head. So she kicked the door open, producing the thud we all heard. Hearing the commotion, Cowell leapt into the tunnel, only to discover that Lillian had not dissolved. He did not know that Lillian was not from Fontaine, but was a thief who made her way in by stealing a ticket. Mistakenly believing that the water from the primordial sea needed time to take effect, he tried to force Lillian back into the box. The two broke the flower vase during the struggle, but Lillian came out on top, knocking Cowell out and putting him in the box. With no way of escaping, she changed her clothes and hid in the costume trunk until the performance ended. And balance the sword again. she would have to go through guard inspection if she tried to leave afterward. So, she has been trapped in the opera house these last two days! She had already become desperately hungry by the time we were chatting over macarons. So, she swiped two of them right under our noses. <laughs> Talk about a sneaky thing. Oh, wow. At this point, all the events that happened in the tunnel have now come to light! Ah, so that's the whole story. Or is it? Bravo! Bravo! Oh, for the first time the scale is now over then, us. Lady Farina, do you wish to speak against the defense's statements? I... Uh, um... Yeah, you're on thin ice. Please answer the question, Lady Farina. Also, if I may add, the trial has not yet ended. As such, I request that the prosecution not leave the room before the proceedings have concluded. <sighs> what? Are you reading my mind now? <sighs> no. I have no further arguments. Yay! I admit defeat. But really, could you at least have left me with some dignity? Wow! Look at that! She's like a deflated balloon now! <laughs> If there are no objections, then as the Chief Justice of Fontaine, I shall once again repeat the full sequence of events. Please do. The actual perpetrator of the serial disappearances, Cowell, selected his next victim from the audience reservation list. With some modifications to the selector, he could ensure that the pre-selected young woman would be chosen. To cover up any evidence while committing the deed, Cowell thought of allowing the water tank to fall, which would conceal the water left behind after the young woman was dissolved. He also tampered with the rope suspending the water tank, using the fireworks at the end of the performance to cause the tank to drop and hide the watermarks. He poured the water from the primordial sea into a balloon during the preparation of the magic box and stuck it to the box's lid. Finally, he passed the prepared hook on a rope through the gap in the magic box's door when bringing the young woman to said box. When the magic trick officially began, the box containing the woman was lowered into the tunnel, tightening the hook rope and bursting the balloon containing the water. If all had gone to plan, the young woman would be dissolved at this time. However, Lillianne was not from Fontaine and thus fled the box with a loud noise. Realizing that there was trouble, Cowell entered the tunnel and met Lillianne. Thinking that the waters had not yet taken effect, he decided to proceed. However, his opponent was more capable than he thought, and he was overcome, knocked unconscious, and placed into the magic box, and thus became his own final victim. Lillianne, according to her own statements, then changed clothes and hid until the performance ended, before hiding in other parts of the opera house. 
As for Linny, he was in the underground structures within the Opera House and was thus ignorant of these happenings. Got that right. From this reconstruction of events, we can conclude that Linny, the accused, is in fact innocent. The end. While there is much in Linny and Lillian's conduct that should still be investigated separately, this case, at least, can be handed over to the Oratrice to make the final decision. Oh, wait a minute. Can the Oratrice still turn this over? Yeah, can the Oratrice still overturn it? I won't be surprised if it does. As such, Linny and Lynette are officially declared not guilty. <laughs> and to the traveler as well. Great work, partners. Thank you all. Thank you so much. That's not celebrate. Yeah, there's no more. Next, to do. I think we deserve an explanation, Guard Vaughn. How did you find the water from the primordial sea in Linny's baggage? Accomplice! Your discovery caused me to make a serious mistake, you know! Or was that not a discovery, but false evidence that you dare to bring before this court? I suspect that the accomplice mentioned in Cowell's notes was not Linny, but you, yes? I... Uh... <laughs> yeah, good luck getting out of this. I'm sure you know what you must do to lessen your sentence. Speak quickly! You want to earn yourself a one-way ticket to Coupon Town? Coupon Town? I... I was just following orders. We were supposed to place blame for the serial disappearances onto Linny, and thus cause suspicion to fall on the Fatui. The higher-ups said this was the best opportunity to do so. And now that your plan ups. has fallen through, and the secrets of the water have been revealed, you have become a liability to said higher-ups, yes? Therefore, you would be wise to tell everything you know and seek the protection of the guards. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, I'll tell you everything I know. Our boss discovered that the water can cause people to dissolve. It can also be made into a potion, which when extremely diluted, can cause people to experience unforgettable exhilaration. We've been in this business for a while now and have made decent mora off it. The disappearances were also the boss's idea. I mean, this is the boss we're talking about. The Who is the boss? <laughs> yeah, it's the Tony Danza. Oh, jeez. <gasps> yeah, and now you just had the water spilled on you. And now you're dead. And now he can no longer talk. Such ruthlessness. <sighs> I shouldn't have expected any less of them. An outrageous act. All present, please submit to inspection immediately. Oh, jeez. However, nothing is found on the scene apart from the liquid left behind after Vaughn dissolved. So, we're just going back now? I guess. That's true, but... Traveler, Paimon! Please wait. Yeah, what? What is it? Linny. I know you may not want to speak to me right now. Maybe you don't even want to look at me. But still, let me thank you again for defending me to the end, even after you learned that I'm a member of the Fatui. Sure. I guess. But regardless, I'd like the opportunity to set things straight. How? I didn't approach you with any ulterior motives or ill intent. I've spoken to you as myself, just plain Linny, this entire time. As for why I'm a Fatus, it's because the goals of the House of the Hearth align with those of an orphan like me. That's all. That was how Father, who you might know as the Knave, approached recruiting us back then too. The Knave? The one who controls the House of the Hearth? She's your father? She is your father. <laughs> That's right. And since we're here, I was wondering, would you mind hearing a story? It's about my past. 
Sure. I mean, it's not like Back we got anything better to first do. Died, Lynette and I were left wandering the streets. To survive, I took to surreptitiously observing an older street performer who did magic. It took me several days to figure out how he pulled off his amazing tricks. I took my sister through several streets until we found a crowded corner, and we began to perform magic tricks there. To my surprise, we proved to be pretty popular, and we could at least stop worrying about where our next meal would come from for a time. But I didn't want my sister to remain a street rat together with me forever. No, of course not. Before long, an aristocrat came to me and claimed that he wished to take us in after watching my performances. So you went from orphans to nobility just like that? That was how we felt at first, too. As if fate was on our side and we could say goodbye to those painful days. But I gradually discovered that while we were called foster children, he was really after my talent for magic tricks. He would constantly take me to all sorts of banquets to garner attention, which he would then use to expand his social circles. That doesn't seem too bad either. Better than roaming the streets at any rate. <laughs> it took a while for me to realize just how dark his heart really was. Clearly. After one particular performance at a banquet, I discovered that Lynette was not on the same return vehicle as me. I waited a long time after we returned home, but she did not come back. I went to that noble's bedroom and asked him about her whereabouts. The answer he gave me was, She caught the eye of the most eminent person at the banquet, so I sent her over as a gift. I mean, you'll be able to perform your magic regardless of who your assistant is, yes? Oh no. So he was gonna... Yikes. <sighs> deal with such people? As far as outsiders are concerned, this is a relationship akin to adoption or foster care, and they have their ways of escaping the eye of the law. So what happened after that? I managed to ferret out the location of the mansion of that so-called eminent person and hurried through the night. But by the time I leaped over the walls, avoided the guards, and made my way in, all I saw was the moonlit ground covered in blood and the knave standing there in the darkness. So, she'd already taken care of that guy. By the looks of it. That's right. She had rescued my sister before she could come to any harm, and had even discovered several girls hidden in a basement, all of them orphans. Father, I mean, the knave, might have seen something in me, and so she made me an offer. The House of the Hearth welcomes you, for your interests align with ours. Here, none will ever betray you. Indeed, betrayal shall never be permitted here. I was hesitant to trust her. I mean, I had just been betrayed by nobles. But she was also quick to destroy the noble who had taken us in at first, giving us back our freedom. Oh, so that's how the two of you joined the House of the Hearth. She has her own plans. Oh, I don't doubt it. She has gained permission from the Sarita to first use the Gnosis's power once she obtains it. She plans to use it to find a way to break the prophecy and save Fontaine. So, she believes in that prophecy too? That's right. The whole House of the Hearth is currently working to combat that crisis. Today's case has also proven that people from Fontaine can indeed dissolve into some sort of water, thus further supporting the prophecy. All of us house members here, Lady Arlecchino herself included, are from Fontaine. We won't give up on defending our homeland. To us orphans, the only connection we have left to this world, apart from our family, is our homeland. So... From Yikes. small deeds like distributing magic pockets to huge schemes like stealing a gnosis, everything is aimed at dealing with that prophecy. Yeah, that's a whole bunch of mess. It's all right. I understand. The only thing I can do is relate all this to you. I just hope you can understand that even as a member of the house, I have never stopped making my own decisions and that I believe what I'm doing is right. Yeah, if you should need anything at all in the future, feel free to find me. I will do my best to help you, as plain Linny. 
All right. Yeah, we're just gonna walk on off then. Um. Bye, Lenny. Leave the opera house. Finally. I wanted to grind all night. And that's not what I meant. Hey there. What was with the disappearing act you pulled right as the trial ended? I'm tired. Were you looking for us, Navia? Well, this whole thing isn't exactly over, is it? I do feel that we're getting closer to solving the serial disappearances case, though. Don't you think so, too? Uh, I guess. Huh? What's wrong, my dear partner? I was really only trying to defend Lenny. Or necessarily looking into this case. Besides! Are you sure we're the ones who can crack a case that's been cold for decades now? And given that there's new evidence from the trial, there should be a trail of breadcrumbs for the Hydro Archon's people to follow now, right? Unless it gets swept under the rug. Huh. I see. Well, I won't lie. I'm a little shocked to hear that from you. But I suppose you are just travelers who have only arrived in Fontaine, after all. Sorry. I might have been too presumptuous. Don't say that, Navia. Ah, oh, and we were having so much fun investigating with you, too. Well, you certainly added quite a flair. It was like having new waters flowing into a stagnant mire, causing new hope to spring forth and the reflection in the murk to become clearer. Well, <laughs> sorry about that. I'm a bit prone to nostalgia. Don't mind me. Wait, shall we have a farewell meal? You know, to commemorate our time as partners? Huh? Do we really need to get that formal? Uh, well, guess you really did treat us as partners, huh? Well, I'd just like to have a proper ending to every important memory. That way there are no regrets later. Anyway, it would just be a meal, so it shouldn't take up too much of your time. Yeah, if you say so. You don't have to twist Paimon's arm! If Boss Navi is treating, kill Paimon in! Oh, <laughs> wonderful! In that case, why don't we return to the Court of Fontaine and head to the Hotel de Boer? I believe we'll make it just in time for dinner. Alright then, let's have our farewell meal! Alright. Quest completed, to be continued. Oh, offerings to the Fountain of Lucene. Offer the Hydro Sigils to the Fountain of Lucene. At long last, we can finally do that. And we get new quests available. And we can go to the Hotel de Board. But we've been going at this for three hours now, so we're calling it a night. We are calling it a night. I got so wrapped up and engrossed in doing something I didn't want to do while I was waiting for an opportunity to do some grinding with my audience that I ended up getting stuck in a three hour long trial. Ah. Anyway, we can easily try and do this again tomorrow hopefully and with a little luck we might be able to actually do what I had initially intended to do and that is have fun with you guys playing this game. Because I know you guys really wanted me to do some grinding for getting my characters to be ascended, so that sh should be the point hopefully tomorrow, and hopefully tomorrow we'll actually be able to do that, but we won't know until we find out together. And so, with that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching the continuation of Let's Play Genshin Impact Live on Twitch, and I'll see you guys back here again tomorrow night, and maybe we can actually do some grinding together. So, Thanks everyone for watching, and until next time everyone, may you ever walk in the lights.